Uh, good evening. Happy Monday evening. Uh, let's do some leg exercises. Okay. Yeah, I did not go to gym. So, when I skip gym, I just do some muscle exercise at home. Uh, because exercise is like eating food. We eat food every day, right? Yeah. Exos we have to exercise every day, just like we eat food every day, okay? Very important. Wow! Oh! Ooh. Ooh. Ah. All right. Yeah, I see the file transfer is complete. Okay. Okay. Whew. Okay, let's take five minutes break, please. Wow, there was some good muscle exercise.
Oh. Good evening, everybody. Um, uh, let's see. Ah. Uh, ha ha ha. <clears throat> Happy one day. And, uh, let's see. Do you mind this toilet paper roll? Uh, I'm sorry, I'm kind of ghetto, alright? Very ghetto, but low budget, so... By the way, I bought my whiskey today, so... Oh. How I missed my whiskey. Oh, okay. So... <sighs> um... Yeah, ha happy Monday, and... I change my hairstyle a little bit. What? How do I do this? Is like I go upside down and hair dryer, and then spray, and I just leave it there uh, without additional hair dry. So um. yeah. So after work, I went to Walmart, and then went to. Hiking trail in a park and ran. Yeah. So, yeah. Let's do. So, when I was doing this um, squats and also calf exercises, I changed them. Hand, ha, handing, right? It, it's like it's martial art position of, of uh, kung fu, okay? Or karate, taekwondo, okay? So it's basically, you know, targeting the neck, right? It's that, that kind of. Uh, and this is, of course, you know, the Korean style, right? Right? Yeah, it, it's martial art position, I mean, the form of fisting, I mean, hand formation, I guess, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know any terminology, um, martial art terminology in English, okay, yeah, in Korean, I used to know, but, yeah. Uh. Happy Monday, everybody. Yeah, it's good. Whiskey. So I guess we can erase some of these words. Now that Barkov is written down somewhere. I mean, in the pa economics paper, okay? And... Because in my spare time, I was thinking about some population growth model. And... Um, I have some whiteboards that still have the population equation and it looks very complex and I was wondering why it has to be so complex so now that our economics is mathematics for economics is done and over with yeah let's think about population mode model okay so should be very simple and I, I, I'm not sure what I was doing there, like, about five months ago. No clue. Yeah, we'll look at it. We'll grab the whiteboard later and try to remember what that was about. So, 
By the way, so last Saturday, I did an interview with a local journalist for two hours, and in the audience, online audience members, uh, there was some kind and generous people. Uh, some of them citizens, some of them even uh, legislator, some of them people like me who have run for elections but never got elected. <laughs> okay, so uh, some of them were more famous than I was. I, I am now, and by running multiple times in many elections. Uh, that's kind of the direction I'm going. So I, I saw some kind of commonality, of course. Uh, yeah, I, I've been to their websites and stuff, and that was very, that was very interesting. Okay. Uh, okay. So, let's talk about triple fission as opposed to binary fission, okay? So, it's a bacteria, okay? So generation first, first generation only one, okay? Second generation, triple fission, okay? Third generation, well, we call it zero generation, okay? Yeah. So it's very simple, okay? Uh, bacteria dividing into three bacteria, bacteria, bacterium dividing into three bacteria. Okay, yeah, the Greek plural, whatever. We just call it bacteria. Okay, uh, you just multiply three, right? Yeah. I mean, we can think of this as one back parent of bacteria giving off two children, right? Yeah. But when bacteria, typically, I don't think there is any bacteria organism that does triple fission. Maybe there is, I don't know of any, okay? Typically, it's binary fission. Mm -hmm. um, maybe there are some organisms who do, does triple fission, okay? Maybe planarium, I don't know, okay? So, we are just making a mathematical model of the bacterial fission, okay? Let's say it's triple fission, okay? Then each of those, uh, they are indistinguishable, okay? They are of the same size, so after some period of time, they achieve their normal size, because they are one-third of one third of size. So some period of time, yeah, they divide into three, two, okay? Each of them, initially, same size, now they grow up, so they're very symmetrical, okay? Triple fusion. Yeah, parent of bacteria giving off two children, okay? So, this is like a 3 to the 0, 3 to the 1, 3 to the second, right? So, in nth generation, it's just 3 to the n, right? And of course, time, right? Uh, n is equal to time divided by period. What is period? It's the, uh, the time it takes for this newly divided baby bacteria to, to become an adult so that it can reproduce. It's asexual reproduction mode, okay? So let's say it takes five seconds for a child baby bacteria to grow up to be an adult bacteria. Let's say it takes five days, okay? Then, during 10 days, how many of this kind of division will happen? Twice. 10 divided by 5. 15 days? Three times will, of division will happen. 15 divided by 5, okay? So yeah, time divided by P, okay? So now, we have B that's like branching, right? Division. So yeah. Uh, population, number of bacteria at given time t is equal to uh, branching factor b, okay, 2d, t 
POP. That's it. It's that simple. Um, we didn't even use differential equation, but in ca calculus book, they use differential equation. And they use E, Euler's number. Okay. And I don't think that is correct. Yeah, let's see what they did. Because if they did something wrong, it's our job to correct them, okay? Because that population growth model in the... In, um... Using the differential equation is very, very, something very mainstream, very well known and very well taught. I widely taught, but I don't think they did it correctly. Yeah, I'm just reading what they did here. <clears throat> Okay. <clears throat> yeah, they're talking about logistic function. Dutch mathematical biologist Pierre Francois Verhorst. Yeah. This is the guy who discovered logistic curve. The sigmoid function. Yeah. Alright.
So the way they did here is that uh, That's how they did it. Um, the well, we need one more generalization here, okay? Um, let's say initially it was not one. Let's say it was initially n zero, okay? Then it will be n zero times three. Right? And zero times three to a second. Yeah. So we need just one more thing. Okay, and it's different from what these guys have, All right? A so what is K? It seems K, it seems K is same as B. So what they're saying is this, okay. Um, uh, B, one over P is same as this branching factor, okay, yeah. Like, how many division? Is it binary division? Then it's two. Uh, is it triple division? Is three, okay. So number of children plus one, okay. So that's what B is, branching factor, okay. <clears throat> it includes the parent too, too, when we count this B, okay. So this is M as e to the b okay then cut that's interesting How interesting, huh? huh? But this uh, equation using E I don't like it. Why? Because E is like 2.7, 3, 1, blah, 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 right? It, and it's not an integer. I don't see any rhyme or reason why they should use E, okay? Yeah, I don't understand the way they derive this in traditional calculus book, right? I understand their rationale, the differential equation, but I don't think it's a good way, good approach, 
all right? Because we rather just stick with natural numbers as opposed to transcendental numbers, fractions like this, okay? Yeah. So I would prefer, prefer this, okay? G is a generational number. Zeroth generation, fourth generation, second generation, okay? Uh, it's generation number. Time divided by period. Growth period. How much time does it take for a new baby to become a reproductive adult? That's what P stands for, okay? For bacteria, let's assume it's five days. Then, if there are 15 days passed by, right, then there has been three generations. Okay, so, yeah, that's, so that's what this is about. Okay. I think it's a better model than this because we don't want to use calculus. We do not want to use calculus unless it's necessary. This Occam's razor, okay. We want to be. Our mathematical mo model, we want it to be as simple as possible. Here you are already losing, here they are already losing because they are using transcendental number, which is ne not as nice as just simple natural number B, branching factor, right? The binary division, triple division, okay? I think this is a better model. I think it's a superior model because it's simpler. Right? Uh, scientists, they tend to think, more complex model is a better model. I disagree. I think superior model is simpler model. Simpler model is superior model. Okay. Because it's easier and simpler. More efficient. Complex model, it may impress some peer review journal artic article editors, right? But they're inefficient to implement, to calculate. Eh? So. Now, let's take five minutes break, okay? And then uh, we'll grab the old whiteboard and look at the uh, quite complicated um, population model. That somehow I came up with like five months ago. I, I'm not quite sure what I was doing there. Okay, so we'll see. Yeah, this make this make absolutely no, no make no sense to me. Okay, why? Because the number of bacteria you can count it; they're countable. It cannot be a fraction like this, two point seven. Okay, I think it's a very wrong model. But the logic, the way they de derive this thing using differential equation is, I think, it sound logic, but. Uh, but it, it's just wrong to use E here. It, it will not be a natural number. This function will not give us natural number. All right? 
for normal bacteria, they are natural numbers. They are in positive integers, okay? Normal bacteria, okay? So, they are wrong, okay? It's a wrong model, okay? Will I point this out at some point? I, I might in this economics paper because it deals with like logistics function what, somewhat, okay? <coughs> As a, maybe as an appendix to this economics paper, maybe, because it's not exactly economics. We are doing biology here. Population growth, but it's kind of tangentially related to what we did. We used demographic curve and logistic curve, okay? Yeah, okay. As an appendix. I'm trying to think where did they aired? Where they aired? Now I see where they aired, okay. What they did was this, okay? DP, DT is equal to KP. And that's where they erred. Why? Because they assumed DT is the infinitesimal time population growth rate. That is incorrect assumption. Why? Because Bacteria or any population, uh, they don't continuously just reproduce. After a baby bacteria is born, they need some time to grow up to be an adult. So this is an incorrect assumption. They are ignoring the discrete part where bacteria need five days to grow up from being a baby to a reproductive adult. That's this discrete time gap. Of course, there are many bacteria in different stage of ages. So maybe this is not too bad, but I will point that out though, okay? Now we, we know where they are. Okay, yeah, we got it. They made a wrong assumption here. Okay. Why? They are mathematicians, they are not biologists. This model will be true if bacteria don't have to grow up. They just keep dividing, then bacteria will be, get, become smaller and smaller and smaller, right? Uh, that, that's not biology. They made unrealistic assumption, and that's why this model is wrong. I have to point out this out because it's so important. Why? This model is very widely accepted. It's mainstream. Okay, we have to correct them. Okay, good. Let's take five minutes break. Okay. All right. I have to make bookmark of this page with toilet paper. Ah. So that I can close this book, you know, and find it again. All right, we'll take five minutes, break, please. Ah, very good.
Uh, so we just caught another big fish in the sea, in academia. Uh, very widely accepted theory, we disproved it. We discovered where they erred. They made a wrong assumption. DT. That's like infinitesimal time, right? That's not how it works in biology. Okay. After giving birth, a bacteria need time to recover. There's this discreteness recovery period. They ignored it. Why? Because they are mathematicians. They, are not, they don't know biology. Very simple fact, right? Bacteria, after dividing into two, need to grow up to recover its normal size. A baby cannot give birth to another baby. You need to grow up to become an adult. In human being, about 15 years, okay? It's not one second infinitesimal time, no. That's very big error, all right? Okay, let's make an example, okay? Let's say branching factor is uh, two, like typical bacteria, binary fusion, okay? Two to two is equal to four, okay? Now, is it the same as E, let's say is 2.7 is, is, is three, okay? Let's say uh, period, recovery period is five, 81. Is four is equal to 81? No. Right? <clears throat> Wrong model, okay? So, and Khan's Academy, we appreciate Khan's Academy. I mean, I do. It's a great educational website. Uh, great success. Congratulations, Khan's Mr. Khan, okay? Uh, but Khan's Academy, they just teach what's up mainstream. We don't. We do opposite things here. If some theory is mainstream, we make a Cartesian inquiry. What is Cartesian inquiry? René Descartes doubt it and try to question it, even if it's mainstream, as mainstream as Marshallian supply demand curve theory or Einsteinian's special general relative theories. We question it. So far, we disprove them both. <laughs> With Sigmund Freud, Karl Marx, we disprove all of them, okay? So even um, Mr. Um, Gary Cantor, okay? It's infinity theory, all right? We got it. Yeah. This is the right equation, okay? So, not this. <laughs> okay, good. But that was easy. Now, let's trace back like five months ago, okay, in the past. So I put back the calculus book and yeah, we got something here, all right?
it seems this is the final product. Well, it is chilly. Let me get some coats here. Oh boy. Ah. Ah. Pen, eraser. Okay. Today we found Okay. Yeah, so it's similar, right? Yeah. R, I guess, is the number of children, right? R plus one, that's the branching factor. Is it binary division is two? Is it triple division and then three? Okay. Triple division, you have one parent and two children. Okay. Yeah, so R plus one, R is, I guess, is number of children. Uh, T minus one, yeah, it's just counting. You start from zero or one, okay? Yeah, and what I guess I forgot to put P there. So yeah, this is more correct than this. Okay, so we can safely erase all the population model in those whiteboards, okay? Because uh, this is better, right? Okay, good. So we got a lot more whiteboards now. We, we can erase all that stuff. Good. Except one, okay, because uh, until I write this down, why put that over there that we worked on today? Yeah, that one I will preserve. Everything else can go, okay. So, very good. We got to the bottom of this population model. So yeah, hey, thank you for your time. God bless you. And um, please, please feel free to come and go, okay? Uh, because I don't want to, I do not want to waste your time. But if you don't, if you think spending time with me is worthwhile, your time, yeah, feel free to stay too, okay? And uh, when it comes to the audience, live audience in the Saturday's interview, yeah, God bless them too, okay? They, they were very kind and generous to me. Yeah. Very good people. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. But I cannot tell too much about them because uh, I have to protect their pro privacy, okay? I mean, the... Alaska Republican Party, they're great, and um, they co they met this candidate, their favorite candidate. I think, yeah, Mrs. Commissioner, okay, out of respect for, to her as that, Mrs. Commissioner, uh, she, uh, she can represent very well Alaskan Republicans, okay? But Alaska Republicans are just only 25% of them, okay, so. Alaska is one of those few states where uh, independents outnumber uh, registered Republicans or registered Democrats, Democrats, okay. In Alaska's case, uh, Republican Party, about 25%, Alaskan Republicans. Democrats, about 15%. So both of them combined, 40%. Independents, more than both of them combined, 55%. And it's no coincidence. 
people come to Alaska to be independent, to get away from it all. Okay, so that's the spirit of Alaska, and I am just one of them. Okay, so I can represent them very well. Okay, so, so that's the campaign point. Okay, so we are done with this, right? Good. Let's put this behind us. Yeah. Okay, enough mathematics for Monday evening, right? Yeah. <clears throat> oh. I mean, talking about bacteria. Um, talking about bacteria, there's ancient kingdom called bacteria. I'm sure they are related, okay, bacteria. Uh, there's Asian camel, two humps, okay? Middle Eastern camel, only one hump, right? But Asian camel have two humps, okay? Their, their name is Bactrian Camel. Okay. So Bactria is an ancient kingdom. Uh, when? I have to look it up. Maybe 1000 BC, 100 BC, Bactrian Kingdom. Hundred BC maybe, I don't know. About hundred BC, okay. It's like two days Afghanistan I think Bactrian Kingdom Iran Two days China, part of China, Russia Right? This Bactria, okay. 100, 200 BC, something like that, okay. So, bacteria and camels, they live there, it's, uh, but, yeah, they're domesticated and there's some of them are wild, okay. They're in Mongolia, today's Mongolia, China, okay. They have two humps, okay. Yeah, very interesting story. They chew the cards, okay, uh, but they are not categorized as the uh, ru ruminating animal because ruminants they have extra stomach with bacteria in there to help digest this cellulose in plant cell walls right yeah bacteria inside of this god of this ruminants they help break down those cell hard cell walls of those plants I guess camels don't have that. That's why they're not ruminants like cows are, right? And camel toe, yeah, is it kind of like two toes, right? Camel. Uh, their parts are also different from cows because cows have hooves, right? Camels do not have ho hooves. So, kosher in Old Testament Bible, you can only eat mammals if it chew the cuds and also it has hooves. So, camel, Jews cannot eat camels. It's not kosher. Because it does chew the cud, but it does not have just hooves on its feet. Pigs, they have hooves, but they do not chew the cords. What is chewing the cord? Uh, they vomit out 
can help digest plants and chew it and swallow it again. That's how cows do their things. So according to Bible, Old Testament, yeah, you can eat an animal only if it does the chew the cards and also it has hooves. And pigs, they don't chew the cards, but they have hooves to so disqualify. Camels, they do chew the cards, but they don't have hooves, so you cannot eat camels. Cows, yeah, they do both. So yeah, you can eat cows. So that's uh, uh, the kosher Old Testament in Bible, okay, so. That was interesting, right? Yeah. But do I eat pork? Yeah. Do I eat, would I eat camel meat? I would. Yeah. So then, that means I don't practice kosher. Well, I'm not Jewish. <laughs> I'm just Asian, okay. So. I appreciate Jews, people who practice kosher, I appreciate that, okay, it's that tradition. Maybe there's some logic behind their rules, I don't know. But in New Testament, that Jews do not believe in, yeah, Mr. St. Paul, he kind of abolished that kosher rule. Mr. St. Paul said, yeah, if it's something that you can buy in the market, you can eat it. That's what it said. Okay. All right. Okay. We'll take five minutes break. Okay.
So during cigarette break, I did some Google search. How long does bacteria take to grow? It says 20 minutes. You can I, under ideal condition, bacteria can double binary fission every 20 minutes. Okay. So I guess mathematicians can play with this scaling, right? Unit of time. 20 minutes, if the unit is year, it'll be a very small number, okay? Yeah, they can play with that. Let them, okay? But <sighs> they made wrong assumption, all right? Yeah, differential equation calculus is about continuous, continuum, right? Uh, which can be good approximation, all right? But in this case, we don't quite need calculus, okay? We just we can handle with just natural number, discrete mathematics, okay? Too much emphasis on continuous mathematics, okay? So that's where they are erred, okay? Because it does not work that way, okay? 20 minutes, that's not infinitesimal amount of time is pretty long time 20 minutes it's not like a fraction of a second you cannot assume that dt right yeah so they erred big time i mean it was nice the way they solve the differential equation, right? Yeah. 1 over p become log p, ln p, right? Then e to the kt, whatever. Yeah, it's nice, but it's incorrect. Okay, so we have to point it out. Okay, so. I mean, Mr. Einstein's equation, right? E equal mc squared. It's nice. The way he derived that is beautifully done, but it's wrong nonetheless. Jesus, Mr. Jesus said, I, I think it was St. Peter, okay, in New Testament. Yeah, devil can come as angel of light. Okay, yeah. No matter how beautiful this equation derivation process was, Einstein's e equal mc squared, the process very beautiful, final product beautiful, simple, e equal mc squared, but it's wrong. Wrong equation, okay? Yeah. Uh, this derivation of this population model is a beautiful process, but they made wrong assumption, just like Mr. Einstein did. Right? So the end result, no matter how beautiful, the process is beautiful, uh, but it's wrong. So we have to point that out. Okay. Yeah. I mean, Alfred Marshall and supply to main curve is, is beautiful, right? But it's wrong still, so we have to abandon it. Well, that would be our recommendation. Will people abandon it? It's up to them. But when it comes to us, and when it comes to me personally, hey, it's up to you, okay? When it comes to me, yeah, I abandon them. It's instructional education, but as a scientist, we have to post the truth. But justice, righteousness, that's more, that's more politics, religion, okay? But in science, our concern is the truth, facts. Right? So we do our job. When a model is wrong, we abandon it. We replace it with more correct model theory, although it may not be perfect. Okay. We do our job. Very good. Yeah. So after work, I went to Walmart, right? And um, yeah, great to see people, right? Every now and then I see really beautiful ladies. I don't get any attention from them. I mean, mostly, but sometimes if they're very extra kind and generous, they appreciate me as a man, 
I, I'm very grateful, but I'm not very impressive kind of guy, okay? No, I'm just average guy, so. But I hugely appreciate females, okay? That's cool. It's great service to community that they maintain upkeep their beauty. I know it's not easy, okay? And look at me, I do my hair, I take a bath, do my hair, diet exercise, but I just do okay, I guess. How about handsome guys? Yeah, yeah, yeah we appreciate them too. Yeah. yeah, but because I'm a guy, I appreciate females more, okay? so. But people are all beautiful, okay? No matter what body type they have, they're all beautiful, okay? So after that, I went to a park, I ran, and it's springtime, mid-April in Alaska, so today's temperature was like 40s, Fahrenheit. So snows are melting. In a hiking trail in a park with a lot of trees, kind of out of the way place. It was not downtown, okay, it was more woody area. Yeah, my shoes got wet, my uh, socks got wet with this melting snow. I think it's fair price to pay to keep myself healthy. So yeah, I have no problem with that. They're dry. No problem. Hey. But running was good. After the run, I was so hot. I was just wearing this Hawaiian t-shirt, okay, when I was driving back. Yeah. So what's in the dinner menu? Hot dog, corn dog, and um, egg roll from Walmart Deli. I love that. They, they, they great cooks. Okay. So inside the Walmart in the valley, there's only one. Okay, about thirty minutes from this house. Okay. Uh, so they closed down the McDonald's. Okay. Yeah, I was very sad. Yeah. So I asked them, then what other restaurant will come here? They said Subway. Great, yeah, yeah. Subway, yeah, yeah. Huge fan. Funny, right? When I was in Los Angeles, California, I used to work in McDonald's as a drive through crew, French fries maker, and also for soda delivery, okay. Also, yeah, I swept the floor, mopped the floor too, okay, after the hours. In McDonald's in Los Angeles, California. What town? I think it was in um, Studio City. Osh Harmon Oaks. Half in between, okay. In the San Fernando Valley. I live there. I live in North Hollywood. Still in San Fernando Valley. Right now, I also live in the valley in Alaska, okay. It's called Matsu. Matanuska Sosisna Valley, okay, Matsu Valley, yeah, and so there was McDonald's, and also when I was in Los Angeles, California, I also worked for Subway Sandwich too, okay? yeah, San Fernando Valley, what town, Encino, they, that's, I used to live there too for a couple of months, okay, Encino, so yeah, I worked both in uh, McDonald's and Subway in San Fernando and the Valley, Los Angeles, California, between, well, for, just for first year, okay? Well, first couple of months, maybe three, four months, okay? About two months each, okay? McDonald's and Subway. That was back in 2006. Right? Now, 15 years later, 2021, 
I'm still in the valley, where it's Matsu Valley in Alaska. Okay. Back then, uh, San Fernando Valley in Los Angeles, California. Okay. I worked in McDonald's and Subway Sandwich back in 2006. Okay. Now, 2021, I'm in Alaska, Matsu Valley. I go to Walmart. There was McDonald's joint there. I really loved it once a week. Okay. Uh, now uh, they closed down now Subway Sandwich restaurant. It's at Walmart. Okay. Yeah. I love them both. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I make turtles. I'm a huge fan. Yeah. Cheeseburger. I love Burger King too. Pizza Hut as well. Okay. Kentucky Fried Chicken. Yeah. I love American. Fast food joints. Okay. So once a week, I guess I'll buy Subway Sandwich because they are opening there in the Walmart. Oh, I, I love that Subway Sandwich, a huge fan. The chicken breast, right? And um, spicy Italian, cold combo, right? Oh, they are amazing. Okay. Yeah. I guess I'll buy Subway Sandwich then. Once a week, huh? Okay. Okay. okay, let's take five minutes break, okay? I'm just glad that I got my whiskey back. Whiskey. Yeah. So the kingdom of bacteria empire empire, maybe not empire, maybe not that big, but kingdom of bacteria. Two hundred BC, okay. Uh like two days Afghanistan, Iran, some part of China, two hundred BC, okay. Yeah, kingdom of bacteria, all right. I'm sure it has to do with, has some related world origin with bacteria and also Vulcan. Vulcan, okay. Yeah. Transposition of L and K, V, K, L, V, K, R, bacteria. Something like that, okay, yeah. T, L, okay, yeah, it's pretty much the same thing. Number two consonant group, okay. So, Vulcan. V, L, K, one, two, three, right? But if you switch the two and three, one, three, two, Bak, Te, Ria, okay? Yeah. Bacteria. This, they, they, I think they are related, okay? So, yeah. I think so. At least they have more probability, more likelihood that they are related because uh, the, their linguistical distance is like one or whatever. Okay. It's very similar. Okay. So, okay. Yeah. Linguistical distance. Okay. Will, will I say, talk about this in this economics paper? I might as an appendix. Why? It's some brand new discovery, so we have to get it out, right, in a written form, right? <sighs> yeah. Okay, we'll take five minutes. Right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Whew.
Okay. So let's talk about stories. People's stories. Uh, I have some friends uh, who have very interesting life stories. My recommendation to them: write a book or at least write a blog. Uh, that's what I do. I mean, books. Uh, it's not easy to publish. It takes a lot of money. Only the people who are established, they can find some publisher who publish their stories. Stories, right? Yeah, I mean, I'm not in that level. So what do I do? I just write papers and just publish in you know, online databases, not peer review journals, because they're higher bar, right? <laughs> but yeah, I also have blogs. This is my campaign website, and also that's free. Okay, yeah. Tell my stories there. <laughs> I do what I can. But so not everybody is like uh, want to be public public figure, right? I am. I'm attention seeker. But not everybody's like that. Some other people are more private. They don't want to be on the spotlight. Okay, so there are some people who pursue publicity, like me, okay? And there are some other kind of people who are more private. They do not want spotlight. So there are two kinds of people, okay? <laughs> people who crave publicity like me, okay? And people who rather be private individual, okay? But both of them have wonderful stories, okay? Yeah. So, but my recommendation, if you have wonderful stories, yeah. If you don't mind, yeah, share with us some online database, online blog for free, right? Yeah. Pass on the knowledge, experience, okay? And that would be my recommendation, okay? Yeah. But when it comes to political candidates, many of them have their own websites. I go visit their websites. And I type their names in Google. I learn about them. Candidates in Alaska. And some of them has a very interesting story, very interesting personalities, okay? Yeah, very, very intellectually enriching and also entertaining too. Their stories, their biographies and experiences. Yeah, so I do look at other candidates. Same race or different race, I mean, political election. I'm not talking about ethnicity kind of race, I'm talking about election race, okay. I do look at them, I visit their websites and I read their stories, biographies, experiences, okay, what they did is very interesting, okay, so, yeah. Yeah. Let me clean my nose. So, if I go to Walmart or some other, other stores, okay, every now and then I see very beautiful people, okay, like handsome men, beautiful ladies, okay, and if they allow me to talk to them, what I tell them, why don't you become a model or actor or actresses, okay, yeah, I do recommend them every now and then when I see them, okay. I mean, of course, they can get married, have beautiful children, smart children like they are, okay? Uh, but I do recommend them to be actors, actresses. So, one of my campaign platform, campaign agenda point is this, uh, okay? Uh, Alaska, there are a lot of many beautiful people. Handsome men, beautiful ladies, okay? And Alaska has some TV stations, 
All they do is weather, news, that's it. Local TV show, TV channels. What if they also do some acting? TV shows, movies, okay? Because Alaska have a lot of talents, okay? I'm sure they have very good cinema, cinematographers, directors, writers, screenwriters, okay? And Alaska has a lot of beautiful, beautiful people, like handsome men, beautiful ladies, okay? So it's kind of like a decentralization of the entertainment business. I don't think it's necessary for people to go to Hollywood to become actor, model. They can do it locally where they they live. Okay, if their local TV station have that kind of variety show, talent show, drama, comedy, TV show, movies. Okay. Concerts, they can do so locally with advertisement revenue and all that stuff. Okay. So, yeah, that would be my recommendation. And if I ever get elected, yeah, I push for it so that they don't have to relocate to Los Angeles, California, like I did. All right, yeah, yeah, hire local actors, actresses, local writers, some inside the story. Alaskan jokes. Back in the days, they used to call Alaskans like sourdough, sourdough bread, because that's what they ate. Okay? So baby was born then. Hmm, I have a sourdough. <laughs> yeah, gold miners, okay, back in the days, they, they called themselves nicknames, many nicknames, like stampeders, sourdoughs, okay, yeah. Yeah, I learned a lot, great deal about Alaskan history. Fascinating history, okay. Good mining, okay. Great. So, gold miners, some of them have some knowledge about wild edible plants. So, they pick berries, okay, and ate them. So, they didn't have any scurvy. What is scurvy? Vitamin C deficiency, okay. But some others, yeah, they didn't know about wild plant, wild adult plants, so they got scurvies. Okay. <laughs> Good miners, okay. Back in the days. What they had in their backpack, gold miners, like Chico Trail, Chico Pass, right? To go to what? Klondike, Canada. But in Alaska, we had a lot of gold mines too. We still do, okay. Like, no more, some. Kenai Peninsula, like there's a town called Hope, okay? Yeah, some gold mining places. So, gold miners, they were way back country, right? They had, I think they had something like beans and bacons, uh, which does not have vitamin C, okay? So, they got scurvies, vitamin C deficiency disease. Okay. Some other gold miner stories, okay. Uh, some gentleman hunted wild games, but he ran out of ammunition. He did not know how to trap animals. Trapping snares, they are recyclable. But bullet, bullets... You cannot recycle bullets, okay? So I guess he should have learned how to do trapping because snares are recyclable. So he ran out of ammunition, okay? Yeah. yeah. When I was in Seoul, South Korea, okay? Uh, yeah. My dad and me, yeah, we went to fishing. I was a teenager or even earlier elementary schooler, okay. Uh, sometimes, uh, most of times, we purchased live baits, earthworms. Sometimes, uh, rarely, but sometimes we used, we purchased maggots, larvae or flies. Yeah, they did sell them, okay? Because there are some small fish. Earthworm is kind of big, long, right? But some small fish, uh, 
you can catch them with maggots. We use them as baits, and they sold them, sold maggots for fishers. Okay. But some other 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 times, my dad would ask me. Yeah, it's rainy. Get out there and get some old worms. <laughs> and I, I did. Yeah. When it rains, old worms, they want to breathe. So they surface, right? So I collect old worms to use as baits for fishing. Freshwater fishing, okay? Yeah, I remember that. No problem. Yeah. I mean, fishing, 100% recyclable. Fishing hook, fishing line, fishing rod, right? Uh, the bait, you have spoon, spoon, right? The spoon, the metallic. They're kind of shiny, they kind of look like a fish, like oval shape. It's recyclable. I mean, sometimes your fishing line, fishing hook, get some snag and you lose it sometimes, right? But technically, it's recyclable. You have this bait that's made with plastic, rubbery, squiggly, that looks like some kind of shrimp or fish, right? Even also warm. Oh yeah, they're fully recyclable. Huh? I mean, if you lose those things in some snagging, uh, you can always find some earthworm, some insects, and hook it into your hook. Hopefully, you don't lose all your hooks. <laughs> but hooks are very small. You can buy a lot of them, okay? Yeah, you can get baits, right? No problem, okay? When I was in Madison, Wisconsin, yeah, I purchased my fishing license, okay? I went to the Lake Monona, I think. Lake Mendota, Lake Monona, mostly Lake Monona, I think. Which is a couple of blocks away from my apartment. Doing undergrad as a computer science major, okay? During the weekend, I would go to Lake Monona and I did not even have fishing rod. I mean, I had it, but I did not use it. I only used fishing line wound in chopstick. Because it was a lake. And so I have chopstick, fishing line wound, and what did I use as bait? Cheese or bake? Ah, uh, not bacon, but spam. Okay. To catch bluegills. And they taste very good too. Okay, yeah, I cook bluegills. No bag limit because there's so many bluegills in Wisconsin, Madison, Wisconsin. Okay, and the water was clean enough. Okay, so I had no problem eating it. Okay. How did I cook it? I fried it. Yeah, with flour, right? I had to scale it, right? Yeah, and debone it, and then uh, yeah, degout it. Right, yeah, then then the flour and the fried you know oil, canola oil, I guess, okay, it was good, <laughs> fresh, the texture, I liked it. I've read bluegills in the frying pan. there's this spider, yeah, it's getting warm, so this. Bugs are waking up, right? Let me get that spider, okay? Let's take five minutes break, okay? Hey. All right. Springtime comes, bugs are waking up, okay? All right.
Okay. So, so story Monday, right? Yeah, we're talking about some story time. We're not doing any mathematics or physics, philosophy, history, politics, just purely story time, right? Yeah, so interesting his story that I had in Wisconsin. Yeah, fishing for bluegills with chopsticks wound with fishing line and a metallic hook and using spam or cheese oh they love it okay yeah so bucket full of bluegills i ate them cooked them and it was good okay but there's some story i didn't tell you yet Yeah, I'm running for United States Senator, okay, next year from Alaska, okay. Uh, so, maybe I shouldn't say this, tell this story, but I'd like to. Why? Because I want to be honest with my voters, okay. Did I always have fishing license? I did not. I got caught fishing without fishing license. Back in, just like 1998. All right. Uh, how many years ago was that? 22 years ago, something like that. 23 years ago. Okay, so. Uh, I got caught. Was, yeah, I just. My excuse. Hey, officer. I don't even have fish in line. But he said, but you are fishing. Yeah, I, I can see that you you, are, you don't have fishing rod, okay? But you are fishing. You have to pay for it. Oh, okay. So I paid like $100 fine, okay? So later on, yeah, I, I learned my lesson and I bought fishing license, okay? So. <laughs> I was young and dumb, okay? So. I'm not gonna lie to you. But the legitimate fish taste as good as this illegitimate fish. The kind of fish that I caught without fishing license, did they taste the same? <laughs> I think so. <laughs> There's no difference, okay? <laughs> they, they tasted exactly the same, okay? So, illegal fishing and legal fishing, they tasted exactly the same, okay? So, it just cost me a hundred more dollars. Well, no, yeah, yeah, well, I was, I got caught fishing without fishing license, okay? I learned my lesson. How much of fishing license? I think it's like 20 bucks, okay? I was young and dumb, right? So. I paid my fine, one hundred dollars. When it could have been just twenty bucks, okay. I was young and dumb. What did I know back then, okay? Yeah, the fish they taste the same, legal or illegal, okay. So I bought my fishing license every year since then, okay. So long my lesson. <sighs> Yeah, it's a bluegill. Yeah, no bag limit because there's so many of them. Okay, it was good. Okay, oh yeah, I, I really liked it. Fresh. I had this bucket. 
I put, put some water, lake water there so that fish can be alive after I catch it, right? Then I bring it home, right? In my car. Or maybe I carried it. Did I have my car yet back then? Huh? I think so. Maybe I didn't. Whatever, it was just a couple of blocks away from my apartment, okay? So I carried it. And I guess I did not have a car, huh? Okay. I mean, when you bring back this bucket, plastic bucket, full of fish, right? You don't need water. It's just like five minutes walk, ten minutes walk from the lake to my apartment. Fantastic view, by the way. Okay. Yeah. Drain the water and just to make it lighter, right? I think I did not. I don't think I had a car back then. Okay. Yeah. Drain the water. Bucket full of fish. Come to my apartment and cook it, right? It was good. Yeah. The texture. Yeah, it was good. Yeah, water was clean. Madison, Wisconsin, back in late 1990s. Okay. It's not like heavily industrial. Okay. Yeah. So there was Madison, Wisconsin fishing. Okay. Later on, after the U.S. Army, after Hollywood, Los Angeles, California. Okay. I, uh, so Madison, Wisconsin, I did my undergrad. It's computer science major. Okay. Late 1990s, early 2000s, okay. Now, later on in my career, I went to Animal, Michigan, okay? Law school, after US Army career, okay? And they have beautiful lakes there, and streams, rivers, creeks, and they have fish there, right? I did fish, but I did not eat that. Why? Uh, because Animal, Michigan, that's kind of industrialized, you have Ford Motor Company, GM, General Motors, okay. Uh, so the water was not as clean as in Wisconsin. So I did catch some bass, white bass, largemouth bass, but I did not eat them because the water was not that clean, okay. I just released them back to the water, okay. But I did catch some, okay. Uh, but I did not eat them, okay, because water was not that clean, okay. It's more industrialized, okay. A lot of motor car companies, okay, so. And I will Michigan, right? How about Isaka, New York? Yeah, that's between Madison, Wisconsin, computer science major, undergrad, and Annabelle Law School. Between that, I was in, uh, Ithaca, New York. Okay. Did I fish there? Uh, no. Why? I was just too busy. I was too busy. Okay. Ithaca, New York. Clean water, even cleaner than Madison, Wisconsin. Ithaca, New York, college town, small town, upstate New York. Very clean town. I, I did some, see some fish under the bridge in the river. Right? Creeks. Trouts, right? I saw them, but I never fished them when I was there for two years. I was too busy doing PhD, okay, so never had chance to fish in Isaka, New York. I was in Isaka, New York between uh, 2004 and 2006, two years. Then I dropped out, okay. Yeah, 2006, 2000, 2004, 2006, okay, so... 2004, 2006. I was like 26, 28, okay. So 26, 28 years before that, yeah, my mom, my dad, they came to Ithaca, New York. They gave birth to me there when my dad was doing computer, I mean, not computer science, but economics PhD. And I heard this wonderful story from my mom, my dad, okay, when he was doing PhD during the weekends, he went out fishing for trout, and he caught big trout in the creek in Ithaca, New York, back in 1977, 1978, whatever, okay. All around the time I was born, okay. And they cooked it, and they said it was very good trout taste. Have I ever had trout before? 
I think so. Yeah, it was good. But have I ever caught trout? No. Have I eaten trout? Yes. I think in a restaurant. It's good. Where did I, what restaurant, where did I have trout? I think it was in San Jose, California, just before I joined the US Army there. It was, it was good. How about in Alaska? <laughs> did I catch any fish in Alaska? Almost. I went to a lake. In Kenai Peninsula, okay, and I did catch one, but it cut loose because Alaskan, I don't know what kind of fish that was, it was freshwater lake, maybe it was grayling, I don't know, maybe white fish, I don't know, okay. It cut loose, it was so energetic, so healthy, it cut loose, but I did kind of halfway caught it when it cut loose. So in Alaska, I never actually 100% caught not even single fish. And I'm running for United States Senate from Alaska. Hey, you're fake Alaskan. You have never caught a fish in Alaska. Okay, what kind of Alaskan are you? You're a fake Alaskan. Hmm. No way, I'm not gonna vote for him. He never caught a fish in Alaska. Fake Alaskan. Totally fake. Sure. <laughs> I bought dead fish in the lake. He was so energetic. Okay, he cut loose. Okay, so uh, my fishing skills wasn't that good enough. It cut loose, it got away, okay, so uh, in Alaska, never 100% caught a fish. I mean, yeah, in Alaska, you, if you have money, you go to the ocean, you fish for halibut, right, whatever, right? But I don't have any money to hire a boat to go halibut fishing. Some of my friends did, and they gave me some halibut fish okay, that they caught. And it's great. Some of my friends caught salmon, and they gave it to me. Okay, it was great, very great. Okay, so, but I'm not very good at fishing. Somehow, they don't like. They do not like my baits. What what kind of bait do I use when I fish typically? A spoon, metallic, oval shaped, glossy, shiny, metallic, so that I can always recycle. Because this cheap, it's cheaper that way. And I, I don't want to buy all this squiggly earthworm or this biological stuff. It makes my hands messy. I have to wash my hands after that. I rather use metal from Walmart spoon, okay. I'm cheap. I guess fish in the not sea in Alaska you if you are gonna fish in the sea, you have to charter a boat that costs a lot of money, okay. Only places I've been fishing in Alaska is the river, freshwater, lake, creeks, okay. I have not caught any single fish. Yeah, I use spoon, metallic, recycle bait, or some plastic, rubbery, squiggly stuff, okay. I guess Alaskan fish, they're like, Hey! You're so cheap! I can smell the metal, I can smell the rubbery, plasticky, artificial stuff. No, I don't. I do not like your bait. You're too cheap. I can smell it. And you bought them all from Walmart. No, you're a fake Alaskan. 
Okay, so yeah, so I, I have never caught a fish, you know, Oscar. Okay, so. But I love Walmart. Okay? Hey, we proved this Walmart theorem, Walmart principle, Sam Watson theorem, okay, in the economics paper, okay. All the fish I caught is metaphysical fish, not physical fish, okay. So yeah, back in the days, late 1800s, early 1900s, people came to Alaska to find gold, and they, some of them did. I didn't come to Alaska to find gold, physical gold or metaphysical gold, but later on, somehow, we found some metaphysical gold, wisdom, knowledge, brand new stuff. Right. We disproved mainstream old theories, we proved them wrong, and we came up with alternative correct theories, just like metaphysical gold, okay, so we got some metaphysical fish in Alaska, metaphysical gold in Alaska. So we got something. Earlier today, we got another one. Population model, okay. Yeah, yeah so we got something. Right? Yeah. We call that a success. I do. Purse is better than catching a fish in Alaska, right? Maybe not. Whatever, okay? Yeah. We do our part, right? We'll take five minutes break, okay? So. So last night, Sunday, okay, I cooked this Korean ramen noodle that I picked up in Alaska Valley Walmart, okay? It was really good, okay? Yeah, I was watching some cool YouTube documentary about Siberia, Russia. Okay, it was very good. Okay, but I didn't quite finish watching that because it was quite long. Maybe I continue to watch that. Okay, so huge fan of Walmart, Mr. Sam Walton from Arkansas. I guess. Okay. Yeah. Huge fan, right? With a yeah, huge fan of Alaska, huge fan of you, okay, I'm your normal fan, okay, so wherever you are from or where you are at, okay, yeah. I've been to many different parts of the world, parts of the America, parts of South Korea, okay, I'm a huge fan, okay, people are, 99% of them, great, good. 99% of the time, okay. <laughs> we have our moments, but what is good? Okay, or oh, yeah, we take five minutes. Break. Yeah, we'll wrap it up real soon, okay, because I'm kind of getting drunk. I gotta get back to work tomorrow, okay, so yeah, okay. <sighs>
Uh, okay. We're wrapping our guys in, okay? So, uh, let's do some acting. Alright, acting. Theatrical improvisation style. Oh, okay. Hey! Are you a virgin? Uh, no, so, no, man. I'm not a virgin. I'm 42 years old. Uh, and, uh, I did have some experience in my past. I did date when I was younger. So, did I answer your question? Okay, so you are you are drawing for your Alaska United States Senate seat next year. So, yeah, pay attention to the details. We want to know the details. Yeah, tell us about your dating experiences. Ah, uh, so man, ma'am, so the thing is, uh, it does not just involve me. I when it's just when it is just me, I can tell you all the details, but. When it comes to involving some other people, especially ladies, who are very kind and generous to me, I, I cannot tell too much details. You're a United States Senate next year, so yeah, tell us some details, entertain us. Well, okay, yeah, what I can tell you is this, okay? We go to bathroom, right? We all do. We are half animal, half God, half physical, half metaphysical, okay? We go to bathroom, right? Yeah, the predictable sequence of sounds. I can only speak for men because I'm not a woman, okay? I've never been to women's bathroom, okay? So, and I don't want to. Okay? Yeah, so predictable sequence of sounds. Yeah, a man enters men's room, opens the door, Kick! he walks toward the urinal and um, there, and then that, and then, then he walk away from urinal, and then he wash his hands, and then maybe it's paper based, toilet, toilet towel or dryer, and then he open the door and get out of there, okay, predictable sequence of sounds, okay. I'm just giving some idea to make some interesting song about it. It was sound effects, whatever. Yeah, pretty tough sequence of sound, okay? In the men's bathroom, okay? It's all the same. I mean, let me ask you this. Are you a virgin? Maybe you are, maybe you're not. Okay, depending on your age, experience, okay? But that's your privacy, right? And uh, I have my privacy too. And I want to separate my public life and private life, all right? I mean, if you are adult, if you are not virgin, you know what how it goes in the bedroom, okay? Hugs, kisses, whatever, okay? It's, there's no need for me to tell you the details because you already know how it goes. <laughs> all I can tell you is not, that I'm not a virgin. I had some experience before, okay. Okay. Tell us some more. Well, it is typical, stereotypical dating scene, okay. Yeah, when I was younger, online dating, right? Out of 100 ladies that I wanted to date, that I sent a message to, one or two kind and generous ladies respond to me. Okay, I love them like love poems, right? And then um, we set a time and place, public restaurant, and I pay for it, buy a of flowers. If the date goes well on Friday night, or Saturday night, maybe we exchange numbers, phone numbers, or not, okay? Then we, we may have second date, or even third date. Then maybe, maybe we can become boyfriend, girlfriend, right, and see how it goes. Right? 
you may go to mountain, hiking place, a park, right? Yeah. I have to, I'm 42 years old. I had some experiences. That's what I can tell you, okay? So, yeah. For the details, there's no need, no necessity, because it's all the same, okay? So, yeah. You already know. Okay? It's pretty much the same thing, okay? Yeah, write law poems. Okay. Oh, you're so beautiful! Oh, thank you for giving me a chance. Thank you. <laughs> I mean, the law poems is more about description of the day, evening. The temperature, the ambient crowd, what was the temperature, what was the light, luminosity, how many crowds were there, it's all a description, okay, poem, even novel, essay, whatever, okay, prose. Then I'll describe my first impression of the lady and I'll describe in the poem, love poem, love letters, okay, how I felt. Maybe I was self-conscious, right? Was my hair on the right form? Was my necktie the best one for the day, for the occasion, okay? So, and yeah, I, the flowers, do you know, the description, details, okay, yeah, okay, we'll leave it at that, okay, so, yeah, romance, romantic, poem, love, poem, okay, love letters, yeah, I did have experience with it, and it was very greatly educational for me, okay, I became a better writer, better poet, okay, yeah, love poems. I'm very grateful to my past girlfriends, dates, yeah, I learned a great deal from them too, their experiences, wisdom, knowledge, okay, so, I became a better person, better man, after I had these dating experiences, I did, okay. Hey, is that why you are anti of you are like pro abortion? You are like anti life. You are like anti. You are pro choice, anti life. You are like pro abortion because you are single and you date around, and you don't want to be responsible to this unwanted child. Is that why you are pro choice and anti life? Uh, maybe, okay, the thing is this, okay, I, I, I admire families, I admire people who get married and have children, we need children, we need children, okay, we need future generation, continuity of humanity, we need them, okay, but it's not my job, alright, my job is to write down all these theories, but do I sometimes feel the need to have a date nowadays we are used to at least how about in the future would I still go out have a date with a lady one at a time that I don't know I'm a man I admire ladies, but will I ever date again? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, okay. But am I happy now? Just being single guy studying economics. After this paper, I most likely probably with the theory, mathematical paper, okay, for the very first time. I have never written a mathematical paper before, okay, so. Will I be happy with that? I think so. Why? 
I also do politics. I do interact with people, okay? Yeah. Will I ever date again? That I cannot tell you. But is it possible for me to be happy without dating? I think so. I'm not dating. Now, last time I dated, how long ago? <sighs> Like a year ago, or less than that, nine months ago. <laughs> Don't know. Bottom line, I'm single guy, happy single guy, so I don't really date, okay? So last time I dated, when I was with a lady, it was like a year ago, what, nine months ago, something like that, okay? So because I'm busy, but do I miss it? Yeah. I do miss it. I'm a man. Of course I miss it. I miss dating days. But is this sustainable lifestyle? Being a single guy? Doing mathematics, physics, science, history, economics, politics. So far, it has been. <laughs> That's what I can tell you. How about the future? I don't know. Okay. But I said, yeah. Celibacy. Yeah, Jesus was a celibate. Yeah, at least what this what Bible says. Okay. Yeah, Peter got married. Saint Paul, I think he was celibate. Okay. Saint John, I think he was celibate too. Okay. So, yeah. Yeah, monk, Buddhist. Catholic priests, right? Is this sustainable lifestyle? Uh, maybe to some, but how about as for me? I don't know. But right now, I think it is because, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm a happy single. Okay, yeah, I do politics, mathematics. Yeah, I'm happy, reasonably so. I'm reasonably. Happy. Reasonably happy. I got my alcohol, whiskey, vodka. I got my cigarettes. Oh. I got my job. I got my house. I got my car. Yeah, I'm a happy camper. I'm very easy to please. Okay. Simple man. I, of course. During the weekends, okay, yeah, I go to online websites, adult inter adult inter entertainment. I do need that, okay, so. But when it comes to human trafficking, yeah, I do not want females to make this adult entertainment movies. I do not want females to work in red light districts. I do not want females to work in gentlemen's clubs because I care about their health, their safety, and their uh, social status. Okay, so I'm against those industries. But, then, but am I self-contracting myself, contracting myself? Maybe I am, but because I still watch those uh, adult entertainment movies. Online, in the internet, okay. But my excuse is this: my defense, legal, well, not legal defense, but logical defense. Okay, Human, humanity has already accumulated footage of these past adult entertainment films. That's good enough. Okay. The plethora of that. Yeah, there's no more okay, needed. No more new adult entertainment films. No more is necessary because we have corpus accumulation of 
end of the entertainment industry already. We have a big library over that, okay. That's enough, okay. So, yeah. As a humanologist, we do not recommend females to go into those industries because we care about their safety, their health, and their social status, okay? Yeah. That's all I have to say. Um, adult entertainment films, footage, we had enough of that already, okay? So, yeah. We can just recycle what already exists. We don't need any more, right? Because we care about females, social status, their safety, and their health, right? Yeah, have I been to Red Light District? Yeah, I have. Have I been to Gentleman's Club? Yeah, I have. Okay. So. When I was younger, okay. Yeah, so we care about ladies, okay? We want them to be healthy, safe, and we want them to be have higher social status, okay? So I voice my objection to those industries, okay? Although I still need it. But we have enough film footage, adult entertainment footage, okay? That's good enough. Okay, yeah. Okay, that's what, what I have to say for today, okay? Oh. Okay, I'm a sinner, I repent, okay? God bless you. Uh, may God forgive me, okay? So, may you forgive me too, okay? I'm dirty. I'm not clean. I'm no saint. I'm dirty, man. I'm guilty, I'm sinner, sinful, all right, so. No, I'm not squeaky clean, no, I'm dirty man. I made many mistakes in my past, but I admit it, and I repent, okay? Yeah. We'll leave it at that for tonight, okay, all right, thank you. God bless you, good night.